We planted at Tawahanji and Ngopar, our blue zone. We are still expecting action. Some of our young men have been trained in different types of agricultural pro programs. Some of our young men today are producing agricultural products and products that are being sold around the state. We are still expecting actions from the federal government on sealing of on the siting of the dams at Okige and the Yiji for dry season farming. The rubber plantation industry in Imo State has suffered a major setback from previous administrations. The state government is poised to reposition our rubber estate at Obiti at you know Hajiwema. Enabia, you know, where it went, Umweku, in Ungoka, and make them the rubber industry hub of the Southeast. Arrangements are in top gear for full development and expansion of the rubber industry through the public private partnership. The government has attracted a World Bank assisted project in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. And livelihood residents support project efforts to support the agro-industrial development and enhance food security. The Atalu World Livestock Farm was rehabilitated, working with National Agricultural Land Development Authority in Nada. I have given approval that that place be concession that to be operated in partnership with the private sector for optimum benefit to the people of Imo State. Also, we are one of the lucky states that we have been choosing for the Special Agricultural Industrial Development Zone. This is a project of African Development Bank. Last year, I was in Cote d'Ivoire to sign the agreement and the Hajjabema uh, a key great livestock market, the airport area of Ningo Park, and the livestock department that we are trying to set up in Okuta has been a mark. And the total of 60 million US dollars has been secured for this program. A modern abattoir is currently nearing completion at the Nazi over the North Local Government area. It is our hope. And before Easter this day, we are going to commission this modern abattoir. The Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources is also working with the relevant federal agencies on the procurement and distribution of improved seedlings to our farmers to enhance productivity. Efforts will also be made to improve the availability and affordability of fertilizers by our farmers. With the standard road network currently in place across the state, our farmers should be able to move their harvest to the marketplace and thus reap the refuse of their labor. The industrial policy. You will recall that since the, during the time of death and Mbakwe, we have always heard of Owere Industrial Layout, Owere Industrial Layout, and yet almost 50 years after. There is no functional industry in that layout. I've directed the Commissioner of Land to forward me the list of undeveloped lands in that place for revocation. We now make the land open to emotions and doctors who are willing to build industries. If you show evidence of your capital to build your industry, we will allocate the land to you. And we will give you the time. We we'll give you the time after which, if you don't develop, we will also revoke it back. In one of our previous meetings, I told you that the administration was on the verge of developing an industrial policy for the state. Working with the UNID, an organ of the United Nations, I'm happy to announce to you that it has been able to successfully provide IMO industrial policy. IMO now has an industrial policy which will serve as a kind of template that will drive these developmental initiatives. With this policy in place, we are now in a position not only to plan for our future, 
that work towards forging both local and international partnerships that will strengthen our economy. Similarly, we have launched a digital economic blueprint fashioned to enhance our economic development in line with global best practices. We have given feeling to these initiatives by establishing a Ministry of Digital Economy. We have also stepped up our efforts in registering cooperative societies for organized rural farmers and artisans, especially those in the private sector, into micro-businesses for sustainable capital formation and increased productivity. Currently, those efforts are yielding results. With our 2023 budget of wealth expansion, there are hopes that all the moribund industries in the state will be resurrected, just like we did with other Palm Nigerian Limited and the one we're trying to do with Standard 2 Industries. Because the wheels of government grind slowly and given the intricate nature of some memorandum of understanding that we have entered, it will take time really for some of these partnerships to begin to yield results. We may not have moved as quickly as we have wanted, but gradually we are getting there. By the recent improvements in our infrastructure, security and ease of doing business, we have also created the natural environment for private investors to establish more businesses in the country. I am working currently with the Nigerian Investment Promotion Council, uh, Imo State Investment Promotion Council, to discuss with serious investors how we can offer them some incentives that will act as an attraction for their coming into Imo State, which will even include tax waivers, tax holidays, and other forms of investment carrot that will enable and enhance rapid and accelerated investment in Imo State. Relationship with other arms of government. When President Mohamed Buhari visited the state not too long ago, sorry, let me drink water. When President Mohamed Buhari visited the state not too long ago. One of the projects he commissioned was the rebuilt Imo State House of Assembly complex. An edifice which was abandoned for years as a result of dilapidation. When our lawmakers returned to the reconstructed edifice, they likened it to a return from exile. Since we have built a world-class executive council chambers in the government house for the executive, including offices, housing even the office of the wife of the governor, I deemed it necessary to make the assembly chambers not only habitable, but conducive enough to enhance the capacity of lawmaking. With the state of the art communication and the other equipment restored, to the glory of God, the Human State House of Assembly is today ranked one of the best in the country. I have also ensured that our judges are not treated. I have also ensured that our judges are treated with the dignity they deserve. Thus, I provided them with brand new official cards to ensure that. They have a befitting means of transport while ensuring that they also have comfortable accommodation. When I came here in 2020, my first meeting with our High Court judges, all the complaints was about that when they go for conferences, they are not allowed to stop very close to the hall where the conference will happen. They are stopped at the gate because they come by their taxis. While not, judges from other states will drive their vehicles and they will be stopped at the door of the conference. 
The moment I had that, a new appetite came into me. And I, pro I procured brand new SUVs for all the judges in Nemo State. I also made sure that we cleared the areas of pension and gratuity of retired judges immediately we assumed office. Even on the last year, even the salary areas owned to Imo State judges for over 13 months before my government, I paid all of them off by last year. We may not have done everything for these two arms of government, but we have shown enough commitment for them to appreciate that we mean well. My administration has also continued to respect the rule of law, and we continue to honor court judgments. We also mean well for our traditional rulers, whose role in our society cannot be overlooked. Thus, we have also provided some of them with the vehicles to facilitate their movement. My plan is that, no matter how little, a royal father deserves some form of assistance and comfort in the discharge of their duties. Works and road infrastructure. It is common knowledge that road infrastructure in the state was left in a deplorable condition and most roads, including the most important ones, could be described as death traps at best when I came on board. Many were simply not motoring and traveling in and out of the state capital of Ogoria became a nightmare for most people. The deceptive and half-hearted attempt by former administrations could not address the matter. Worried by the situation, on assumption of office, I came up with a three-hour mantra of recovery, rehabilitation, and reconstruction to ensure that the decayed infrastructure and rehabilitated and restored. The result of the synergy in planning and execution is fantastic. In three years, our prosperity government has made their strides in the road infrastructure. We have embarked on the massive construction of 70 roads. Some of these roads have now been completed, while some are at various levels of completion. A breakdown of some of the roads are as follows. The Assumpta, Potakot Road, of Oware, down to General Hospital. The Umuguma Junction has been to life, and motorists are enjoying it. The Muhammad Buhari Drive, from Potakot Road Junction down to World Bank Road, was constructed to alive and be defined with solar powered street lights to beef up security in that area. The road was commissioned virtually through Zoom by President Mohamed Buhari in 2021. The Asante World Bank Road was equally rehabilitated and commuters in that area have heaved a huge sigh of relief. We are taking the road up to Umuguma and the work will continue by the grace of God. The major road that gave motorists nightmare, unbelievably, is the Chukumawonha Road. Motorists coming from Umuaya to Okigwe and Olum would normally use the road as a bypass. The road which was abandoned for ages because of flooding was finally restored and people could not hide their job, which was fully expressed on the day the road was commissioned. Similarly, most landlords and residents of the Tiger Road had abandoned their property because of flooding. Many left to their houses and relocated to their villages until our three actual prosperity government came up with the balloon-driven technology and recovered the road from perennial flooding. One other road that gave residents of Ogwede great work is the issue of our streets down to MCC for road. A building that was blocking the road had to be removed to pave way for its recovery and reconstruction with good drainage. That link from Ebu Road 
through the leaf market to MCC Junction is now a beautiful sight to behold as landlords, traders, and, pub and the public testify to the miracle that has just been done on that road. The Nazi Naked Bay Harbor, Obi is a road that used to be a nightmare to the host communities, housing the Federal Polytechnic Naked and the Federal University of Technology of Work has also been reconstructed. And before Easter this year, the road, including the bridge, will get to the open the express way. The Akachi Road has been completed with a beautiful street light, duly reconstructed and dual light with motorists enjoying the compelling scenery of the banks of Otamere River. It is worth repeating that for a long time, the Oweda Olu Road was in a very deplorable condition. And not only, it only received palliative measures and attention from the previous administration. We were able to find courage. The road became a pet trap at a point and pose much hazard ranging from insecurity, accidents, loss of life, incessant vehicular damages, and unnecessary delay. As a result, a short journey of 30 minutes ordinary took more than two hours to complete. It had six kilometer road has now been completed, reconstructed, dual light, and fitted with solar power satellite at the elevation. The Java Upward of Massive Erosion Threat on the World of Lulu has now been effectively controlled. Commuters and residents of the affected areas have continued to show their appreciation. The road was commissioned by no less a person than the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari Tisi Epa. The Owere Okibo Road, measuring 59 kilometers, has also been reconstructed. Like I said earlier, before the end of next month, that road, the remaining part will be completed and commissioned. It, will, it has been dualized and it will be fitted also to, with the street lights. It became a typical Broadway in the first phase of the construction fully completed up to Anna. I have attached in my address a detailed list of all the roads we have done so far, which are so many here, to begin to call one by one. In the bag that will be handed over to you, a copy of this address is uh, also contained in that bag. When you go home, I plead with you to take time to look at the list of all these roads. In all the local governments, all the local governments, 27 local governments of Imo State, our government has a command five kilometer routes spread across the 27 local governments, rural routes to be completed. We have awarded to two kilometers by 27 local governments. And all the contractors have been fully mobilized advance payment to pay to them. I urge you leaders to go back to the various local governments to identify where those roads are located, identify who are the contractors, because we did as a deliberate policy, as a way of employing our own local contractors. Those roads, the contracts were given to our indigenous from those local governments. So that by the time the roads are not done, you will not know who to ask questions. I've attached the list of all the roads, local government by local government, in this my speech. Okay. You will also find it in the bag that is being given to you okay. to go home with. The contract for the construction of the five kilometer road in each local government, out of two, has been awarded to contractors from those local governments. Unfortunately, some of them have not reported to science. It is therefore important for you as leaders 
to find out from your local government chairman who the contractor handling the road in your area is and how far he has gone with the work. In tourism, culture and creative arts, under our administration, the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts has repositioned the most for her formal status as a destination hub in Nigeria through the following steps. They have commenced the recertification of tourism facilities for issuance of operational licenses to all tourism and hospitality establishments. They have established tourism information center at the Imo State International Exhibition Center for display of tourist guide and other tourism promotion material. They have articulated and documented data based on tourism in the state by preparing a list of hotels by location on one hand and in alphabetical order in the other hand. The one golden gun at the 2020 National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFED, which was in George Plateau State. They also won two new number golden guns at the 2021 National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFED, held in Adeki, Ekiti State. He was there to win the first prize as the state with the best costume. They celebrated the World Culture Day on May 21st, 2022. Signed an MOU for the establishment of Ibo Kishi at the Mbari Cultural Center Award. Working in partnership with the Party of Binagala Enekuku to promote Ibo culture and arts. Organized 2022 World Creativity and Innovation Day on April 21st, 2022. The discovery and grooming of creative, the discovery and grooming of creative arts, including magic finger, artists who draw and paint pictures in seconds, concluded plans in collaboration with Teamwork Communication to host Emo My Dream, Talent Hall show in Emo State. Obtained and designed plans for the proposed Emo State Modern Zoo at Ezeama Ikeju local government. Deployed five number revenue compliance teams to fuel to lead significant increase in the revenue drive. It is important that I don't forget mentioning because it is not long if you have a wound in your leg and after you have been treated and the wound has been healed. It is always easy for people to forget. I am sure that the people of Imo State have not forgotten the experience of passing through a Kennedy. The people of Kennedy. It was high technology. It was a high erosion management technology that was deployed that gave us what we are enjoying today. You know of the situation of Obana Luzier Street. Now I've seen so many people every evening passing through Obana Luzier looking for where good health and all that plan and that happens. That is the to do that. As part of the welfare and humanitarian activities of the government, the wife of the governor has continued to reach out to indigent and vulnerable groups with the make of human kindness. The three hour administration has captured here under successful interface with all the existing and operating modernist orphanages in the state. This has been followed up by several visits and inspections to ensure that they operate according to the set standards and the certified and registered modernist baby homes in the state while shutting down those that do not meet the required standards. The office also achieved a seamless and timely distribution of palliatives to widows in the three zones of the state to cushion the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. <coughs> Similarly, we have continued to offer support and empower the over 35 registered modernized baby homes in New York State. 
They'll be going to food items for supply, essential drugs, materials, ranging from rice, pampas, cartons of indomie, gallons of granite oil, meat, powder, sleeping foods. Part of our humanitarian agenda to the Minister of Women Affairs and Office of the Wife of the Government. Justice. The Justice Minister benefited from the General Civil Service Reform introduced by my administration. In addition to this, my administration cleared the backlog of outstanding pensions and gratuity to all retired judges in the state. I could not live with the sudden story of judges who served the state with dedication, being owed pensions and gratuity. This to me was unacceptable. Similarly, payment of those ideas has been done, and I think that our judges, both retired and serving, are in a new series of the new year. The justice sector has recorded tremendous achievements in enhancing justice delivery. For example, the Department of Public Prosecutions won most of the cases which they defended on behalf of the government. The Department of Civil Litigation has also been repositioned for more effective service delivery. We also sometimes adopt alternative dispute resolution strategies to solve lingering cases and thus fostering law and harmony in the state. My administration has not been found wanting in other aspects of government, such as in the land administration, criminal justice system, housing and social development, disaster management, and humanitarian affairs among others. My administration has also provided countless number of community and social development projects, such as blowholes, rural roads, electrification, street lightnings, and buildings. These are either funded wholly or in partnership with our various development partners. Our administration is determined to provide affordable housing to our people. Consequently, we have acquired land for the development of the phase two negative exclusive garden estate. There are ongoing negotiations to acquire more land from communities to enhance the dignity of our traditional owners. Our administration recently presented that the five CUV vehicles, SUV vehicles, to the chairman of the Imo State Council of India, his three deputies from Olong, Okibe, and Owere, and the chairman of the councils in the 27 local government. Also, 54 traditional rulers were given staff of office to fill vacant traditional stools in some autonomous communities where their elders died. This move is to secure our traditional institutions and improve security through settlement of disputes and maintenance of law and order in our autonomous community. I want to come again, you can Between 2020, between 2020 and 2022, the state government has received over 30 million US dollars. Additional revenue, this money came as grants. Grant means that it is not loan from the World Bank. Under the state fiscal transparency, accountability and sustainable program. This is a World Bank program where standard of governance are issued to all the participants in the Federation. And they monitor you on how you are accountable, how you are transparent, how you are living your state. And at the end of every year, they compute results. Imo State has not won this before. In 2021, in 2021, we won. In 2022, we won again. And the total, and that amount totaling 30 million US dollars has been credited to the account. This 
is a clear vote of confidence by the World Bank on the government's remarkable, transparent and accountable governance. I understand that some people want to be clever and hard by backdating land documents and going to the Ministry of Land to purport to authenticate them. Let me warn you, I, Pope Uzadema, I know every land that belongs to government in Imo State. So those of you, those of us who think they can enter any land and overnight to build a house there, you are building a house for Red Cross. The government doesn't need the house because the Owele master plan has provision for railway, light rail, has provision for judges' quarters, has provision for all the essential facilities that will make a world a befitting capital. Those of you who are part of tinkering the land, doing illegal construction, compromising government officers, obtaining approval of OCDA, the only man who can sign certificate of occupancy is the governor. I will not authorize, I will not delegate that power. I will not authorize any commissioner to sign C of O. And I have not signed any C of O since I came to office. But I can tell you, I will recover all the lands that belong to government. And the land doesn't belong to, there is no community, community doesn't own land. Communities can own economic trees. And when government decides to acquire those land, they will pay such community compensation for economic trees, not for land. The land, the landlord is the governor. Go and read the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is very painful that the indigenous, our forefathers, made a sacrifice. We struggle to have this capital with other parts of Igbo land. And they came, they donated land. And the federal government gave us capital. 10, 15 years after our fathers died, their children are claiming we are the owners of the land. We are taking back our land. How? Did you buy the land? So the goodwill, those who brought capital to a world, the goodwill and honor we give to them is to pursue the thing they brought to get away. Because they want to sell the land. You say you have consent to judgment. They have both the court, out of assembly, governor's office, all of them are called government. Government is a one. If there were judgments given before, the law also provided or such how such judgment can be cancelled. So we will appeal any judgment that does not protect the interests of our forefathers who brought the capital to Owen. They are not only our fathers, they are also our fathers. So they brought all of us together. So we defend our heritage. So that is the, So stop going to steal government land. Because you cannot take government land through the window. The land belongs to government. Only this year, after we have completed our ages department, we will advertise. We have already identified the land that are available for our brothers and sisters to build their homes and build their offices or build their businesses. After you have built one house in a world, why are you looking for another land to build another house? Will you live in two houses? So allow those who have not built houses to build their own. So anyone who tampers with government land will pay dearly for it. Not only will the purported purpose be revoked, any structure put there in will be brought down. So, please be properly guided. It's not enough if you go and take government land, you say you have built a amusement park, you have built this, you start sending people to come and beg the government. Listen, if you are crying, listen, in Italy, we have professional criers. If you are in a sunrise and you are not in the mood to cry, you go and hire a crier to come and cry for you. So if you go and see government land, you come and cry. It means nothing to me. So take what belongs to you 
and the law what does not belong to you, to the person that it belongs to. That is my warning. And I pray that Almighty God will touch our hearts to behave. Those who are doing this on, on such illegally acquired land, or any illegally acquired land for that matter, and think they can circumvent the law by backdating the documents, are many wasting their time. Let me know the government is currently recertifying all lands in the state. There is a new law. Every certificate of occupancy to become valid must be recertified. That is the new law. The new bill will have signed into law in 2020 when I come. So those who are forging get some of this signature, forging the uh, Obama signature, forging Ajibu Demwa signature, forging uh, uh, Akim's signature, Watching the uh, Okorota, even this ones are lying to say that it's not their signature. Those ones are that we also know the signatures that are correct and the ones that are not uh, correct. So I beg you, please respect yourself so that we can respect you too. The most challenging problem which has faced this administration is that of insecurity. With the current confessions, from apprehended kingpins of the insurrection, it is not clear that the security challenges were contrived by the opposition to slow down the progress of government. Ever since I started this speech, I have refrained from mentioning the opposition and their destructive activities in the state. But permit me just to tell you that we have defeated them. They have failed in their mission to slow down our developmental strides. It is true that we have spent so much money and energy, time and scarce resources to extricate ourselves from their evil clutches. Some gallant law enforcement officers and innocent citizens also paid their untimely price and died in the course of fighting for this insecurity. But it is also true that we have successfully shrugged them off to record the monumental achievements that are being held everywhere. Once more, let me commend President Mohamed Buhari and all the security agencies for their support. Only two days ago, I had audience with Mr. President, and one of the most expensive and most advanced technologies that is Telomer as a solution to the insecurity we are facing in the United States has been procured by federal government and the private state. So there is no part of the United States you are hiding with even a jackknife that we will not see you. We have seen those who are behind the insecurity in the United States. We now know those who are funding insecurity in the Imo State. We will continue to know more about those who are sponsoring and funding them. Some of our people who come to out in the day and work like they are very big, important big men. In the night, they plan how their brothers will be slaughtered. Anything that is bad is bad. And we must all rise to condemn it. It is not about hope who is man. Governors will come and go. The demo state will remain. So it will destroy this state. There is no other state we can call our state. So let us rise to defend our state. It is our heritage. I thought that what we should be talking about is that governor has done this. Governor has taken this money. Governor has taken this land. Governor is building this house, or governor is stealing, or doing corrupt things. Now, what I hear is governor is not able to manage insecurity, and in the night, you go and send people to go and kill people. That is insecurity you want me to manage. Unfortunately, I'm looking for me. Two other looked for this office, I looked for it only through God. And I made promises to God. 
what I will do. Even if today is my last day as governor, I have something to show that when I came, I did. What would gladden my heart is that when I'm no more, I can call the first God and say, Sir, you sent me. I went there. You gave me all the powers. But I couldn't fall into any temptation. That's what I want. So, those of you who think it is by killing Imo people, if you hear that this, this local government, they have 100,000 registered voters. They want to go and pay 50 so that the 50 will remain. Are you sure that the day of election you will be alive to be voted for? Because God is watching. God will watch and say, okay, plan things you know. So when it is very close, when you think you eat the food, he will take you away. Some people have been sworn in as governor after one month they die. Some people die even few days to announce their results. It's God that knows who will be the government and at what time the person will be the government. And here, God endowed our state. You are dealing with innocent and helpless citizens. Is it for what? You came home. We had a peaceful Christmas. No incident of any type. We had a peaceful New Year. No incident of any type. Our security record and profile came up. You have to go and pay some people to go and kill or hack into security to, to spoil our record. It's your record that you are spoiling, not our record. Because we now know you and we will soon get you. And you will be paraded. The law is not afraid of any human being. So I want to thank you and urge you, just like the chairman of the occasion said, after you leave here, ask yourself, in everything that has gone wrong in Imo State, what did I do as an individual? When you hear that they have killed people, that some people they attack their go to the market, to arrest those who are manufacturing bombs, you will be the first person to run to social media. When you hear that uh, in our mama, where a camp where bandits are, they have been attacked. He said, oh, people in the wedding ceremony, wedding ceremony. They went to wedding. Where are you there? But when you hear that four policemen have been killed, escorting on a king to him and no? social media, nobody's saying anything. Because those policemen, they don't belong to anybody. And then they want me to support that kind of idea because I want to win the election. What type of rubbish election? I don't want to win a lot as a Saturday. I want to take victory, a little victory that will come from God. So I am not desperate. I'm not desperate. And I don't tell anybody that I'm even contesting a election for seven times. So why are you breaking your head? Why are you killing people for what you don't know? So but I know that there is a God in this land. You may not be like the magic of a night, but gradually, gradually, He will expose the evil people. So as you know, for a better part of 2020 and 2021, insecurity threatened the state with reports of various criminal activities, mandatory kidnapping, Insurgency, visual killings, even cannibalism, and the unresolved cases of assassination became the order of the day. Well, I'm not going to the government. Could have overwhelmed any government. But 
thank God. By the grace of God, the support of Mr. President, President Mohamed Bouhari, the security agencies, we weathered the storm. Today, it's no longer in my road. In fact, the Nemo State has come down. In Anambra is up. In Enugu is up. Every state, outside the southeast. But when they started the act, it was like, the more people are angry. How can the more people be angry? The more people are the easiest people to govern. If you are honest and you have a voice, they don't look for trouble. There's not about intimidation, trying to put fear in the people, not to come out. Is this all not filled with human beings more than we expected? So we cannot bear good with bad. We must continue to work for emo people. The area of security equipment and the logistics deployed to find insecurity in Imo State is not sufficient. In fact, the Inspector General of Police was full of praises when he came there to receive and commission state of the act Amrod Usna Kaya donated to security agencies in Imo State. This was in addition to the many operational vehicles and logistics who have availed security agencies. So let me tell you, if not for this security, the way a way to a new road is, is the way a way to LL should have been, a way to a renter should have been, a way to Umaya should have been. What has happened? The money now is being used to fight insecurity. And what led us to take that decision? After our comprehensive assessment of the situation in Limo State, we saw that some workers, mostly civil servants in Limo State, live, that live in a way. Because hash rate has gone up. Hash rate went up. Some people are paying over 2 point something million for a flat. And look at Owere, she just, and it enjoys epidistantism. Owere is at the center. I think that if you can do a 30 minutes drive from Okiba to Owere, workers can live to, to, in Okiba and come to work in Owere. They can live in Owere and come to work in Owere. And they can pay as much as 50,000, 40,000, so they can use the money to do other things. So the storm of, I want to live in one small cluster city will not be there. I've just sent a, a letter now to Imo State House of Assembly to extend the Owere Development Capital Territory from 15 kilometer radius to 18 kilometer radius. So we can expand development. I've just done that. So and uh, I think but if we have good roads, have street light, have security, there's no other way London was built. No other way. New York was built. All the advanced cities that we struggle to ask for their visa to travel to. Human beings built them. Human beings built them. And in the past, before 1960, in every profession, people came first. In mathematics, is secondly the best. In economics, is a Professor, uh, what is it? Yeah. We kept uh, in business, the commerce and trade is not going to go and When the Queen came here, Nigerian government didn't have any Rolls Royce to carry the Queen. It was Rolls Royce of what Nobu Jugo that was used. The first Hebrew professor who became the Vice Chancellor of Unilam, uh, Professor Emil Jogu, is not an Hebrew man. So when I was better being the last, We're not the best anymore. People used to follow us. Now, what we see now is that we have to be following people. And sometimes you follow blind people and you fall into the bush. So it does not matter 
It is good for a man who understands the needs of his people and the history of his people to be in charge. And the man who is not selfish. So this administration will continue to assist the security agencies to decide their patriotic duty. For those who have paid the supreme price, their families will never be alone. My plea, as always, is for us to join hands to sustain the peace. It is indeed regrettable that some politicians have vowed not to relent in contriving insecurity in the state just for political gains. Have you not paused to ask yourself? How come the hotbed of insecurity in the state has been domiciled in Olu and recently now in Okibe? This insecurity that the only recognizes Okibe and the Olu. How come? Very soon we will parade some people and they will tell you about themselves. Why should this be? Most of the people that are being attacked, most of the people that are being killed, are those who are committed to Imo State government. Why is it that nobody who is against Imo State government that has been attacked? If you see traditional rulers, those that are after are those who are loyal to government. The politicians who are loyal to government are being attacked. I want to ask other political parties that are against my government, why are these insecurity? Why are these boys not attacking them? Let us look for the answers. Well, I think that our Mumudo do. Our Mumudon do. We know there are those behind the insecurity in the state. And I believe you, you know them too. Let me therefore use the opportunity of this moment to urge you to appeal to them to stop and repent. That enough is enough. They should repent. We are not permitted by any law, even by the Bible, to take blood. That which I will get by taking human blood should never come to me. And so shall it be for all of us in Jesus' name. My esteemed elders, leaders and great stakeholders, I've just laid before you our detailed court card in the last three years. I believe that this has sufficiently informed you on what we did or what we failed to do with your mandate. This is in the spirit of being accountable to you and the other heads of the people to whom power belongs to. I must add, however, that as detailed as this report is, it is by no means exhaustive we have looked at a good number of our achievements for want of time and space. The Ministry of Information and Strategy will provide each of you a more comprehensive account of what we have done in the last three years in a booklet which we will have at the end of my address. Even that may not be exhaustive, but many things have happened after they, they have come to press. What is important? is that you have a documented evidence of our achievements for records and posterity. What is it that are things that are causing trouble in Imo State? What Imo State needs is leadership. Leadership that is transparent. Leadership that is got fearing. Leadership that understands the need to move Imo forward. Leadership cannot be 
by where you come from, but from who you are. You can be from a way, you can be from a king, you can be from a loop. If you have nothing to offer, you have nothing to offer. I think this is a big difference. We want to start it to judge us with a very correct so that the ultimate judgment of history will be informed and be verifiable. For instance, when we say we have done X number of roads, we have listed them. And we have also saved their locations and their lengths. Someone in doubt can go and verify our claim. This is accountability and transparency in government, which is the creed of our three hour transparency government. In furtherance of that creed, yesterday I deepened a noble tradition we started which is to hold a live phone in program with all the private and public radio stations in the state. I started it last year and it lasted for two hours wherein I made myself available for emo people anywhere to field questions on any subject or of their choice. And this was live on these radio stations. This time around, we added another hour to make it three hours, to allow more time for people to ask questions. There was also another novel addition to the program this year. Representatives of several interest groups, such as students, market associations, road transport unions, civil society organizations, labor unions, women organizations, and the media, they were all invited to sit in the hall not just to watch the program, but to participate in fielding questions. Also this year, the entire program was streamed live on Facebook, Instagram, and several other online channels. It was equally covered live by three national television networks. Now, the whole idea is to engage other members of the emo public who may not be privileged or pursued to be at the stakeholders meeting proper. In an uncensored conversation about the actions or inactions of government. So in a way, it is a mini stakeholders meeting, or if you like, you call it the People's Assembly. And it was consciously put together by the government to interrogate the happenings in government. What does that tell you? It tells you that this is a government that has nothing to hide and therefore is truly credible, accountable, and transparent in every sense of it. That brings me to the concluding lines of this address. You will recall that on the 12th of June 2020, when I addressed the first stakeholders meeting, I told you that we had a covenant with God to govern him with state for the good people of the, of Limo. I told you that when I was praying to, to be the governor of Limo State, I promised God that if I'm made to be the governor by him, I will use the position to work honestly for the good people of Limo State. I told God that if you have done it and God did it, so I have a body a burden of that covenant that after the prayer and the agreement, God made me the governor. And it is my time and thought to keep my own side of the covenant. And what is the covenant? To use the office to serve my people. And from 2003, from 2003 to 2020, I struggle to contest one election or the other. There is no how any sensible human being will believe that you can be a of that God. So when you visit all those places where you they give you check to wear your neck and your waist, governorship is not there. 
Go to the church and see where God is present. And make your covenant. So God will tell you where you will not be your government. It is God that decides. He that says when it will be and when it will not be. So don't play God on earth. I can assure you that I have not come to grab. I have not come to grab or steal your money. I have come to work for you instead. I have had two phone calls. What nonsense are you doing? When you were not the governor, you used to bring money. Now you are governor, we can't see you again, we are not seeing the money. Yes, I need to bring money. It is not the way you spend your personal money. That is not the way you spend the public money. That is different. So it is almost three years I made these profound declarations and assurances. The question I now ask you. I have kept faith with my promises. I thank you for coming. The Imo State of 2019-2020 when I came. And the Imo State of today. Is it the same? No. So I thank you for answering in the affirmative. Let me reiterate that those declarations and assurances of 2020 still subsist. They will continue to succeed for all the period of my governorship. I will repeat also that if you find me reneging on those promises, if there is any way where anything is not going well, you should not hesitate to raise an alarm. I can only add that by the grace of God, who made me governor, I will not fire him or Imo people who voted for me. I will continue to serve you to the utmost of my ability, in truth and with the fear of God. As I hand up this address, you will permit me to hear say that to the glory of God, I am the only governor of Imo State in recent history who has spent three years in office without a scandal. Not even an indictment. If you see where I have one block, tell me. If you see where I have a bank account, tell me. If you see where I'm building a hotel, tell me. Where I've transferred your money to anywhere, tell me. If anything, the people are saying, my friend, are you with your senses? The one with God is majority. It is not a record, it is a record that is not by my mind, but it is divine, inspired grace. My determination to succeed, I will not compromise. I therefore want to ask you, my beloved brothers and sisters, that I have kept faith with my vows to serve you for the good of all. And God has made it possible for us to be able to save some money. Money that we would have used to develop in most states. Money that we have been used to make life more meaningful for our people. But we are spending most of this money paying for insecurity that is man-made. Such a conscience. Such a conscience. The primary school in your village is broken down. The hospital is not working. You are killing it. God will judge. I want to thank I want to thank all of us for finding time to come here. We must not play politics to be more we must not play politics with God. We must do that, which we can do, sleep with our two eyes closed. I want to thank all of you for coming, and may God bless all of us.
Oh, God, in my, 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 my